But that presumes that the game has another chapter to it. I don't think there is another chapter to it. I think the Fed goes bankrupt. I think the U.S. goes bankrupt. So this is the end of empire stuff, Greg. Yeah. This is like America's had the world reserve currency for 100 years. It's had a great run, but it looks like this could another five years. The U.S. could be pretty much I concur. finished. Yeah. Welcome to Dream Richer. We have all heard that Bitcoin could go to zero. But something we rarely ever hear is that the dollar itself could go to zero. Today, Max Kieser, along with Greg Foss, unravels the dark future for the USA as they argue, the future doesn't look so good. On February 1 of 2022, the USA surpassed $30 trillion in national debt for the first time. A common question many people ask is who does America owe its debt to? Well, the majority of the national debt is debt held by the public. The government owes it to buyers of U.S. Treasury notes, including individuals, companies, and foreign governments. President Donald Trump is the second largest contributor to the national debt. He added $7.8 trillion to the debt. This was a 39% increase. As of February 1, 2022, President Biden has added $2.26 trillion to the national debt, since taking office on January 20 of 2021. This outpaces both President Obama and President Trump's spending. By the end of this video, both crypto experts shoot straight shots on why the total US country could collapse. If you find the video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe. Let's get right into it. Yeah, I was thinking, I think we're basically in the fourth cycle of scammers. So the uh, Raul Paul and Mike Novogratz and a few others are kind of uh, at the center of this, this latest wave of, of bubble and scams that have come into so-called crypto space. And as Greg has pointed out, the asset class that is Bitcoin is kind of shrugging it off and it's not really having an impact on, on Bitcoin at all, really. In, in days gone by, some of these uh, major scams like OneCoin was from a few years ago. Uh, and others, uh, they had more of an impact on the price of Bitcoin. You know, what, what boils my blood is that rejects from Wall Street, like Mike Novogratz, who was kind of a hedge fund reject, he fucked up his hedge fund, he walked away from the industry for a couple of years uh, and saw an opportunity to recreate all the scammy shit he was doing on Wall Street in uh, crypto. Uh, or uh, Raul Powell is a, another Wall Street reject. He, he, I guess he wasn't uh, given a partnership option. So he, he kind of went away and crawled into a cave for a while and saw an opportunity come into Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is both the greatest and the worst industry in the world. It attracts the worst people in the world. It also attracts the greatest people in the world. You know, the price is reflective of the, the fact that you've got the smartest and greatest and noblest people in the world working on Bitcoin. You've also got the shittiest, worst, morally bankrupt scumbags in the industry as well. Uh, when you put them all together, you get a current price, which is uh, whatever it is right now. If they try to take rates anywhere higher, you're going to have massive default at the central bank. The central bank is going to need a bailout. So in 2008, Federal Reserve bailed out Wall Street. They swapped all their bad debts for fresh treasury bills, and they put all that bad debt on the books of the Fed. Now all that bad debt is worth zero cents on the dollar, and nobody wants to buy U.S. debt anymore. The U.S. Treasury bond is being vomited from the reserves of countries all over the world. Nobody wants to buy U.S. debt. It's no good. It'd be stupid to buy U.S. debt. China's getting rid of their debt. Russia's gotten rid of all their debt. Japan is a huge basket case. You know, Japan is actually the linchpin that holds the together this whole global Ponzi scheme because they always had the lowest rates and you could always do that carry trade of borrowing in Japan and putting your money into some other currency and making a positive spread and then leveraging it up 20 times and you've got this great carry trade but that looks like that's also blowing up so I mean I understand yield curve management I understand that they can try to bring rates to a higher level but that presumes that the game has another chapter to it I don't think there is another chapter to it I think the Fed goes bankrupt I think the U.S. goes bankrupt every president borrows from the Social Security Trust Fund over the years, the fund has taken in more revenue than it needed through payroll taxes leveraged on the baby boomer generation. Ideally, this money should have been invested to be available when members of that generation retire. Instead, the fund was loaned to the government to finance increased spending.
The Congress sets a ceiling on the debt, but raises it frequently. Since 1960, the Congress has modified the U.S. debt limit 78 times, with more changes surely to come for the negative. Congress knows a debt crisis isn't far away. In less than 20 years, the Social Security Trust Fund won't have enough to cover the retirement benefits promised to people born from 1946 to 1964. For the average Joe, this is very bad news. Why? Well, because the U.S. government will be left with only one solution to pay of its debt, and that is to increase taxes like crazy for the average resident. So this is the end of empire stuff, Greg. Yeah. This is like America's had the world reserve currency for 100 years. It's had a great run, but it looks like this could another five years. The U.S. could be pretty much I concur. finished. Yeah. I would concur. Um, I will also say, though, that if the U.S. is done in five years, uh, Canada should have been done two years ago. OK, and my precursor for the U.S. to fail would be a G7 country. Unfortunately, my beautiful country of Canada will likely be the weak uh, sister amongst the G7 countries that will be the first to fail, primarily because we have a buffoon as a prime minister who uh, says stuff like, you know, the budget will balance itself. But at the end of the day, let's look at what Max said uh, in the context of all other fiat countries. The USA will be the last fiat to fail. Again, it goes back to uh, this idea of moral hazard, which is, again, the wiggle room. Uh, when the central bankers and Al Greenspan and others or Ben Bernanke or Jay Powell says, you know, we have the right to engage in moral hazard. We have the right to bypass ethics, morality in the legal system to protect the functioning of these markets and to protect the liquidity of these markets. And what that's done is created a, a, an economy and a society of, based on fraud. So there's very little now in America that's not tied to Wall Street and therefore tied to fraud. The medical industry is now entirely fraudulent because of it's been commodified and securitized. All of banking, obviously, has been securitized and runs on a business model of fraud. The agricultural industry, the industrial industries, all of, all of the sectors of the economy are tied to some degree to their cash desk where they squeeze out extra profits, engaging in fraud. It's just fraud. And as the dollar loses world reserve currency, Brady, the problem is that other countries are saying, you know what, maybe we don't need America. Maybe mm -hmm. we don't need the U.S. dollar. So in this crisis, the, the difference with this crisis, Brady, is that there's no coming back. The inflation we see now is not going to reverse. Uh, gas is going to 10, 11, 12 dollars a gallon and it's not going down. Uh, prices of food are going to go up on a permanent basis because the entire globalization of post-World War II is it becoming unglued and the dollar's world reserve currency is losing its cachet. And this is a, a new reality. It's clear from Max Keesers and Greg Foss discussion that Bitcoin wins the fight against the dollar. The dollar is losing value at an exponential rate. Besides fears of inflation or recession, the total country's economy could be on the brink of total bankruptcy. Historically, when a nation's debt exceeds its ability to repay even the interest, it can be assumed that the currency will collapse. Typically, governments exacerbate the situation by printing large amounts of currency notes in an effort to inflate the problem away, or at least postpone it. The greater the level of debt, the more dramatic the inflation must be to counter it. The more dramatic the inflation, the greater the danger that hyperinflation will take place. No government has ever been able to control hyperinflation. If it occurs, it does so quickly and always ends with a crash. We have already seen the collapse of the Argentinian peso. Do you think the dollar is next? Let us know in comments below. To learn more about the latest crypto news, watch these videos here.